Well, Michelle Parisi is one of those doctor people who's up there at Clemson <laughs> running people around. And tell us about <laughs> Shana getting her degree and what it's in and how excited we are for her. Yes, we're very excited. Shana Madden is our very first health extension agent. Hired health extension agent. Health extension, specifically hired to deliver health programs. We are so tickled that you're doing that. Yes. And you look very healthy and like you're, like you're living what you preach. I sure try to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so today you've come to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. Because when I was a little girl, they didn't have sunscreen. And we would mm -hmm. go to the beach and I would get burned up and then I would sit inside and they'd put vinegar on me. Yes. And nobody would even play cards with me because oh. we didn't have any way oh. of protecting ourselves. But we've come a long way since then. We absolutely have. And as you mentioned, it's spring. And so with springtime comes lots of outdoor activities, physical activity, sporting events, and of course, gardening. Right. Yes. Yes. And so um, when we're outside, we just want to make sure that we're careful about the amount of sun exposure that we get. Um, there's been a lot of research that shows that skin cancer is directly related to sun exposure, unprotected skin mm. sun exposure. So there are two things that we really just want to try to make sure that we do, and okay. that is to um, make sure that we protect ourselves and our skin from too much sun exposure, as well as prevent sunburns. Oh, We've okay. found that with uh, as few as five sunburns over the course of your lifetime can double your risk for skin cancer. Wow. Yes. Not many people have gotten to be grown up without having more than five sunburns. That's sadly. very true, that's especially so easy. yes, that's yeah. very true. Hopefully, we're getting better at that with our with our children. Okay. But um, well, so give us some tips on what we can do. Yes, of course. The first line of defense is prevention. Okay. And so Shana is going to tell us a little bit about prevention. All right. So the American Cancer Society states that there's three ways to ensure that you're not getting too much sun. So if you spend time out in the sun, these are three things that you should okay. do. First and foremost, you should make sure that you try to stay out of the sun. So the middle part of the day is the hottest, when the sun seems to be the hottest, so you're going to try to find shade during that part is of the, the day. Is the sun, does it have more effect on your skin It's closer, so it's time? just hotter at that point in the day. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, so you want to make sure you're in time. the shade okay. in the middle part of the day. That seems to be the hottest. Okay. Second, you want to make sure you wear what protective clothing you can. So we brought a couple items, if you don't mind showing these for us. So first, you'd have a wide brimmed yes. hat. Uh -huh. That's going to cover your face and neck and protect and you from the sun. Ears. And the tops of your yes. ears. Yes. yes. Yep. Next, a nice long sleeve <laughs> shirt, something lightweight that's going to protect you from the sun but not be super warm. That's going to protect your arms. And there's so many now that aren't so heavy and they're, sure. and they're breathable. Yes, aren't they? they're so breathable. Really, yeah, okay. Lastly, we have some UVA, UVB protected sunglasses. You can find these Walmart at the dollar store. You don't have like to spend that. a lot on No, just a couple bucks. It'll be okay. perfect. So stick those on for us. So that's perfect. Three perfect ways to try to, you know, protect your skin, wearing the hat and the glasses and the shirt. So that'll keep you safe while you're out in the sun. So. And it's good to keep these, you know, since they're not so expensive, to keep them in your car because um, you never know when you might have to stop and do something. Sure. And, and you all would of need a sudden, there you are. Sure. Right? And, and it's and just speaking, like keeping a right, an umbrella in your car. That's right. Why not keep some sun protection? That's right. And okay. speaking of sun protection in your car, sunscreen. Um, that's the third thing that we should should do in forms of prevention. That is so confusing. It's got all these numbers on it. Can you make some sense of it? Yes. So when we talk about sunscreen, so sunscreen is combined ingredients that help prevent the ultraviolet rays from damaging your skin. So in sunscreen, you'll see on the bottles that there's two types of rays. You have UVA rays and UVB rays. So the UVA rays are what is the long-term damage to your skin. That's the leather look, the sagging, the dark of the skin. Um, UVB rays are actually the sunburn that you get, so the redness oh, that you see from the sun. Two different, okay. Yes, so those okay. are the two different kinds. So those are that you're going to see. So UVB, remember, is actually your sunburn ray. Okay. So that's the one that people are more familiar with. So speaking of those, when you look on a bottle of sunscreen, you see the UVA, UVB, you also see SPF. So most of the sunscreens give you protection against both. Yes, ma'am, against okay. both. And then you see SPF, and yeah. those letters just stand for sun protection factor. And what that means, that just means the ability of the sunscreen to protect your skin. So again, back to those numbers, 15, 30, and 50. So now, you, I've always thought for somebody like me, 15 would just be worthless. But you said actually <clears throat> it, it is does give you protection. You don't definitely. have to go for 100 all the time. That's right. So people with real pale skin talk about needing that 100. Yeah. But if 15 is something easy to grab or what you have available. What you have. 15 is going to give you UVB blockage up to 93%. Really? 30 will protect you up to 97%. That's a lot. Yes, and then 50 will actually protect you up to 98%. So getting a much above the number 50, you're sort of getting you know, your protection there, and that's going to give you 
the, the best on the highest level. But again, all three of those are going to give you those numbers, and it's just that percentage. If you have a chance of skin cancer in your family or you're ultra sensitive, okay. just those steps up, those percentage but differences can make a lot. But I don't have to go for 100. No, you don't have to. Because sometimes I can't find that. That's correct. So okay. these are the three most common that you typically see in the store, right. 15, well, 30, you. and 50. Okay. Yeah. So those are the three that you would most commonly see. So speaking of sunscreen, anyone over the ages of six months should should, should oh, use sunscreen. Okay. So even if you work inside, you know, research has shown that even walking to and from the car or sitting near a window at work, the windows in the, in the car. Yes, yeah, so work, yeah. our windows block against UVB, which are the rays that cause the sunburn, but they're not going to block out those, those UVA aging. rays that, are, that give us those aging effects Ooh. that you can't really see. Okay. So yeah, okay. most definitely you're going to want to wear sunscreen on a daily basis, whether you're inside or out. Okay. So. Yeah, and then lastly, here I have a shot glass. This represents one ounce. So science has shown that uh, for application of the entire body, eight, uh, one ounce would be enough for a full day in the sun. Um, Even for like one if you had on shorts, you could do your legs yes. and your for, for legs the entire body, everything. one okay. ounce is good. Yeah, so if you're at the beach or gardening or out in the sun all day uh -huh. long, you would be expected to use up to a fourth to a half of the bottle of an eight ounce bottle. Oh, because you can't just put it on once. That's right. So you put it on 30 minutes prior to exposure. You, it, it takes a while for it to kind of get Yeah, so you want to get it in like 30 minutes before you get out in the sun. Okay. And then after that, you have to reapply every two hours. Even so, if you don't go swimming. That's correct. So reapplication is just as important as that initial application. Okay. If oh. you are swimming or sweating or toweling off, then you're going to want to reapply even sooner okay. if you're wet that entire okay. time. Now. Um, they have fancy ones that are expensive, and then they have the store brands. Do you think it's okay to get the less expensive ones? Most definitely I do. Again, you're just looking for that protection. You're looking for the UVA, UVB protection and making sure that you have that, you know, the SPF factor. Okay. Well, well, I feel like I have really learned something. Thank you very, yes. very much. Well, hopefully okay. you'll be able to identify what those numbers mean the next time you see those in but the store. if you go out the boat and... The one thing I've learned about boats is you can't count on the boat starting every time you want it you to. You cannot. So if you, you get cannot. in a situation where, you, unfortunately, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you end up getting more sun than you meant to, is yes. there anything you do to kind of minimize the damage? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, when you get a sunburn, there are basically four steps that you want to take okay. in order to treat the sunburn. So the first thing that you want to do is cool your skin off immediately. Oh. So if you're near a lake or a nice cool pool, you'll want to jump in, get your skin cooled off, and then get out of the sun, okay, of course. Okay, get out of the sun, yeah. Right. So then the second thing... But actually getting in that cool water can help minimize some of the damage. That's right. It stops the, the uh, temperature, obviously oh, stops okay. causing burning into deeper layers of your skin. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. so we want to cool it off. Right. The second thing we want to do is try to decrease inflammation. With a sunburn, you're typically having inflammation on your skin. And so you can do that by taking an anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen. Come on. That'll help? That will help. Good yep. Lord. And it helps make you feel a little bit better, too. But it actually too. helps the damage to some It extent. does, yes, yes. Well, that's fascinating. Yes, okay. and you can use a topical as well, um, and that can provide those, a little bit of an anti- Those things that you yes. can buy over the counter. That's right. That might help, too. Yes, okay. exactly. How about something just to make you feel better? Yes, we do have something that can make you feel better. With a sunburn, one of the problems is that your skin gets very dry. A sunburn will kind of pull moisture away from your skin and away from your body. And so what you can do is use one one of our age-old uh, remedies that we've heard about, and this is actually an aloe well, since plant. Since it's a gardening show, I think that's a, very appropriate. That's right. So we brought some <laughs> aloe to show you. Um, the aloe plant is a uh, succulent, and so it takes up water and holds on to that water. Well, it will do the same thing on your skin. If you put aloe on your skin, it actually asks, acts as a barrier oh, for moisture. Yeah, so the water, it kind of just keeps the moisture in your skin and keeps you from getting dry. Um, when you get dry, you get cracks, and that causes an increased risk of infection. And we knew it was good for burns, but I mean, like a burn at, at the stove, but just the, an inflammation from a sunburn. That's you can right. get some relief from that as well. That's right. Good. Yeah, when you crack this open, it's literally just it's this gooey goo, yeah. goo gel in there. And that's exactly what you just put it straight on your skin. And again, it will provide that protection. Now, if you're one of those people who can't even grow an aloe plant, and Lord help you if you can't grow an aloe plant, <laughs> they're pretty easy to grow. Um, but people have got some preparations that contain that. That chemical, that compound? Yes, yes. You can just get a nice lotion okay. um, sometimes. And actually, you can just use a regular light lotion. Um, we recommend that it's not fragrant. Uh, it has no fragrance in it so oh. that it doesn't irritate the skin okay. even more. Okay. Um, but you can also just get plain old um, 
aloe vera gel. Okay, so tell me the four things to do. First is to Cool it cool down, okay. yep. you want to cool your skin off. Uh -huh. The second thing is to try to decrease inflammation with ibuprofen. Okay. The third thing we didn't actually touch on, but it's getting lots of water, oh. drinking your fluids okay. in okay. order to keep from getting dehydrated. And the fourth thing Cause is... Because you've lost a lot of moisture through the sunburn. Okay. That's right, exactly. And the fourth thing is moisturize your skin okay. using something like a light lotion or some aloe vera. Um, I go to the doctor every year because I have had a lot of sun exposure and often they have to do, they find little spots on me mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm glad for that because it, I feel like it prevents melanoma, which I certainly don't want to have. And so do you recommend that people um, pay attention to what they see on their skin and ask their physician about it? Absolutely. Um, we recommend that you actually get your skin checked by your doctor every year, at least yearly, and then just keeping track of it yourself, kind of just making sure that you that you look for some things that might look a little odd or discolored, misshapen, those kinds of things that you look on your skin. Well, the sweet people who come and put makeup on every week, I'm going to start telling them <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> to exactly. look for those telltale spots. That's um, right. This has really been... Um, an this has been an education for me. I did not understand that I, how anything is going to be helps. That that you don't have to feel like it's you know if I can't get 100 percent, I'm just going to give up because none of that lower right. stuff is going to help me. And then that things like um, trying to cool off and mm -hmm. taking um, a, an anti-inflammatory. That there yeah. really are steps we can take. Because right. I do know that in South Carolina that that we, as careful as we are, things are going to happen. And um, but that we really should. In addition to keeping an umbrella in our car, we should have sunscreen yes, and, and some of the other things That's that you've right. reminded us of. Well, I'm glad that y'all have added safety to your list of, of, thank of you. responsibilities. And I want to thank you for all the work, obviously, that you did um, looking these facts up and for sharing with us today. Thank you for having us. Okay, it's been you. great.